Hey, 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 what is going on, guys? What's going on? What is going on? Welcome back to another exciting head scratching episode of Insane Disappearances. I am your host yet again tonight with a, a pretty strange story that I found out about from uh, one of my viewers. I decided to dig a little, you know, dig a little into it to see what's going on with this case. And it's a brand new one. Okay, um, this particular case is about a 62-year-old <clears throat> woman by the name of Deborah Sawyer. Um, now, this is a situation where, a, you know, a frantic search is, you know, on throughout the uh, West River, you know, neighborhood of Tampa. You know, and this is for that woman who has been missing for at least 10 days, okay? And there's a part in this story that's really going to get you go. you know, it's going to get you right here because you're going to be like, oh, snap, there's another one, okay? But we'll get to that. Don't want to rush into it. All right, so um, it was like, you know, more than a week ago. Yeah, it was about yeah about more more than a week ago when uh, Deborah Sawyer you know was last seen. Uh, now this place now this was at a place called Julian Lane uh, Riverfront Park. Okay, once again, there you go right there, a park. So obviously this happens all over the place. It don't just happen you know at Yosemite or any of the other parks that have been mentioned. You know that are the real big ones. You know. But we got this one here in Florida, one that I never even heard of. I didn't even know that uh, Florida even had that type of forest, you know. So you see, I don't, I don't live in Florida, so I wouldn't know anyway. But like I said, uh, the place is called Jillian uh, Lane Riverfront Park. Now, uh, this is where her car was also found, with her belongings inside the car. There's another one where. A car is being found parked in the park, and all of their belongings are in the, in the car. So, I could say easily, and this is just for, I guess, not so much walking in the, in the park, but just walking, period. If you're going to be doing that, you don't want to have nothing to weigh you down. You want to be light as a feather almost, so you won't get tired too fast, and you start to sweat over time. You know, you may not even have any, you know, extra gear or extra clothing. You know, what if it start raining? Okay, then you got to change your shirt because if you don't, you're probably going to end up with hypothermia. You know, you're going to get the chills, whatever, you know, whichever comes first. But I mean, if it's in the summertime, that's different. But if it's in the winter, when in, anywhere in the fall, you might want to make sure you carry you some extra stuff. You never know. It may rain while you're out there walking and you start to freeze that because it could be cold rain. You know, I wouldn't want to be stuck outside and it's cold outside and then it's raining at the same time. No, I can't do it. I live in New York almost half my life. So, you know, I know you don't want to be in the cold while it's raining. It's not, 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 not comfortable. It is not comfortable. But anyway. Okay, so. Um, now, the... Uh, now this is something that uh, one of the family members was saying. Uh, uh, you find the, you know, you find the strength, <clears throat> uh, through your family. Well, actually, no, this is, this is actually, uh, Candace, you know, uh, Candace, um, you see, Candace Larry, you know, which is, you know, her daughter. Uh, she's, you know, basically what she was, and, and she's right, you know, you find the strength through your family because when you, you lose a loved one, like say they pass away, you know, you got your whole family to confront, you know, to, you know, to console you and all that stuff. Like when my dad passed back in 2010, um, I couldn't have done it without my mom. You know, she's this powerhouse, you know, and she helped me through it. So I understand exactly where she's coming from in that area. You know, when it comes to something like this happening, you know, it's not in that aspect, but still, you know, the family part. But anyway, so, um, now, 
It says here also that uh, the Tampa Police Department has issued a silver alert from Sawyer. Like I said before, she's 62 years old. Uh, she's also a grandmother uh, whose vehicle was found on January 14th. Once again, with her phone, her purse, her, you know, oh, the car was also parked in the handicap spot. So that means it was in, she had an element. Think about it. He said in the past that a lot of the victims turned out to be you know, elderly who have handicap, you know, situations. That was a lot. Why is that? Why did you pick these certain ones? They either have uh, Down syndrome or they got, well, yeah, Down syndrome or they could be, um, what do you call that one thing? Um, autistic. You know, there's so many different levels to this, you know, because you got, you got people over here who just are found dead. Mysteriously, you got these people over here that have all these elements, but it's always the same exact ones. It's never anyone different. Okay, never anyone different. It's always that same category. You go, you know, just one after the other every time. You know, it's almost like they're looking in a folder. They just, just going through them like this here. Let me see, handicap, such and such, such and such. You know, and then they say, oh, right here, this one. Go kill him. <laughs> you know, I'm like, wow. You know, and it happens all the time, and it's happening again. Now, I'm not saying that's what they're doing, and I'm not saying that's what they would say because she's right now. She's not, you know, dead. She's just missing, and I would prefer it stay that way so she can be found. Obviously, <clears throat> so um, now, now ever since they found, you know, her car, uh, she has come there to the spot. You know, every single morning. You know, so uh, she, you know, she was seen before. You know, she was seen before that, but this was on January eighth on a video uh, at a uh, at a place called uh, Hard Rock Casino. Okay, now the family alone believes that she never made it uh, made it to home. Uh, you know, made you know made it back home to uh, you know your boy city. So. You know, and that could be a possibility. She went out there, and that was it. But see, my thing is though, this was like I said, this was on the eighth. Her car was found on the fourteenth. So, um, it said at first that she went missing on January tenth of this year, but the car was found on January 14th. She was seen on a camper, you know, on uh, on January 8th. So, this is really, I'm confused. Okay, so she, it says on the, when I first looked this up, it said that she went missing on January 10th. This is what it says on Google, okay? That's how I found out about it, you know, all the other stuff. You know, someone told me about it, and I looked it up, and that's what I saw. It said that she went missing on January 10th of this year. I'm looking for it right now, just so you guys see what I'm talking about. Okay, right here. And this is one of the first initial... Uh, information that this is some of the this is like the first initial information about it so um just give me a second here I want y'all to see this now look where it says missing I think let me see how this one make sure yeah where it says missing it says 1 10 2019 right now if it doesn't look like that it's only because it's backwards you know you know from where from my Vantage point, you know, that's how I can see it in its backwards when I'm looking in the camera. So, hopefully, you guys can see it. But it says right here January 10th of 2019. Now, on here, this is and this is a, a, a new post. It says here, um, that she went, 
she was you know she was seen on the camera on January 8th okay her car was found on January 14th but it says here she was missing she went missing on January 10th so obviously she went missing before the 8th maybe I don't know if she was seen at a party that means she wasn't really missing she was just probably having fun I mean it didn't say that they just said she was seen on camera at that place you know, the casino so she wasn't partying she was just probably maybe she was passing through. maybe maybe she was just walking through you know the area maybe it was a, maybe she was going somewhere else and she just happened to be passing through there you know because if it was in the casino just, the casino was obviously well like a big old building you know somewhere and she was in there probably one of these bathroom maybe she was in there gambling who knows you know like like she said she has a very bad memory so maybe she was doing that and then forgot that she was doing it and then that's how she ended up you know kind of vanishing at this point but um it's, it's anybody's guess so that's why i really hope that she is found you know and safe so that they can get her treated you know because like i said memory loss that's not a very good thing to have when you're not around your family and you're out there alone you know you don't know where you are at times if you do forget you know i heard of some people being who they would they walk out the house like say if they had to go to the bathroom and they can't find the bathroom yet they live there so they walk out of the house to go find another bathroom like maybe go take a piss on the side of the house and then you never come back they found the mother like in a little grassy area she said well i had to go to the bathroom now this wasn't like days later, this was like maybe a couple hours later, this was like maybe close to six in the afternoon, it was, so it was getting dark. And she, they, the person was found with their pants down, trying to use the bathroom, you know, so I'm like, wow, okay. So it's possible that she could be, maybe at that level, I don't know, for her to be out there on her own, and she's not being found, obviously... The memory loss may cause a problem and the fact that she can barely walk you know that will cause her to stay where she is or maybe she might fall or trip over something you know and she can't get up and this could be a, it could be a lot of things so it, it, it could it sounds like it could be a missing 411 case but this is definitely a case of a person who is handicapped and has never been has been found since you know, so that's the part that got me, you know, she hasn't been found since that day. So, it could be a number of things. You know, hopefully these number of things turn out to be something more logical and then she could be found and sent back to her family. You know, that would be the best thing, you know, but as of right now, she goes into a park and never comes out. So that makes me believe that she could be one of those victims who were handicapped, who went in there and never came out. And they were elderly, so I don't know. It was I don't know if it was it's the I don't know if it's the fact that they're you know handicapped. They can't really do anything to fight anybody off, or you know they can't run. They you know they can barely walk, so they know that they can't get away. They always catch up to them, so they just say, okay, now we can kill, them. or maybe we can just take them, or whatever. I don't know, but with this. <clears throat> it definitely sounds like that as far as that's how most of them get taken and are never seen again you know I hate to say it but it does sound credible enough to be a part of the uh, missing 411 fam family so but anyway moving on um Let's see. Oh, yeah. All right. They also said that, you know, a lot of pain most times um, without medicine. You know, and she said that she just can't uh, imagine how she is out there without it. You know, I can understand that. You know, I mean, you you in pain and you don't have your medicine with you, so that means you're out there. You can't really walk. You're in pain, so you're uncomfortable. 
You be wanting to stop. You don't know what to do. Because you have nothing with you. So you wandered out there. You know, yeah, it looked like you was out there partying. You went to a casino. You didn't have a memory loss. You didn't have memory loss at that time. But probably shortly after that, that's when the memory loss kicked in. You probably forgot everything that you did prior. So you just wake up in this new world. You don't even remember, you don't even remember how you even got in the first place. So hopefully somebody's helping her. I, I would hope. You know, she probably can't even remember where she was, where she came from. So that might be the reason why she, nobody's contact. No, that, she, that could be the reason why she's not contacted anyone. You know, so. But like I said, I hope that something good, something good does come up. Now, um, let's see here. Now, you know, Larry's husband and co-workers are searching also. Now, one of them said uh, they they gave a tip, you know, to the police from someone who, you know, someone who said they'd seen her walking, you know, with somebody. So I'm like, okay. So, like I said, hopefully somebody is helping her if she does have memory loss. You know, waiting to see if her memory will come back about where she came from, why she's even here. You know, because maybe she was still in the um, casino when all this happened. Somebody saw that. They wanted to help her. Could have been the manager, maybe. Who knows? I mean, you never know. But, um, let's see. Now, it is important, you know, to all of them. You know, this is what. Wait a minute. This is, okay. This is an imp this is important to all of us," said B with Deborah Gatlin, uh, one of uh, one of Lambert's. Oh, this is like one of her co-workers that said that. Okay, now it said also um, to be with a co-worker, you know, who is going through something uh, like this is trying. Yeah, so you know, maybe you were the co-worker. She's trying to help her out. I would hope. You know, so wherever she is, you know, the co worker there, we're well not co worker, but a person there, wherever she is, is helping her. You know, I hope. I really do hope. Um, now, she also says that, um, that uh, you know, um, Deborah last spoke to her, you know, 12 days ago. Uh, Two days before, you know, she went missing from Jillian Lane Park. Uh, she said that she uh, believes in God. Uh, uh, that is where I go, you know, when I want to give up. Uh, you know, she, you know, she talks out loud to her. You know, you know, uh, she speaks to her. You know, uh, I let her know, you know, what I'm feeling. So, I guess that's her way of, you know, kind of coping with the situation, I guess. You know, just yelling out the stuff. But, in her mind, she's yelling it out to her. Okay. Now, the police, you know, they have not been able to confirm, you know, whether the tip, you know, whether the tip they got from today's uh, today's search will help uh, now anyone with information on Deborah Saucer's uh, whereabouts is asked to call Tampa Florida at 813-231-6130 all right that's that on that story yeah so you know to uh, reiterate, well, not reiterate because I hadn't even talked about this, but you know, sorry it took so long, guys. But you know, I was a little under the weather. I'm, a, I'm still a little under the weather a little bit, but not, you know, too bad to where I couldn't do my show. 
because uh, I, I was so out of it. I didn't really feel like doing anything, so I took a couple of days off. Even though it had already been like three weeks, you know how I do. You know, I wait three weeks and I come back with a nice big one. <laughs> you know, I try to do my best, you know. So, yeah, because this story right here, it, 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 it kind of got me right here. But at the same time, it opened up some avenues of why she went missing, you know. And the fact that it all connects with the missing 411 cases. So, yeah, I had, I had to really talk about this one. But, um... But yeah, man, um, in other news, I'm pretty sure everybody's still watching it. Won't miss no names. You already know who that person, these people are. <laughs> you know, just want to, you know, kind of just lighten a load a little bit. You know? but, um, but yeah, man, it's, um, this is uh, a pretty crazy, uh, pretty crazy uh, case. You know, it, it's got a lot of areas to pick. That I want to get into, you know, you know, because uh, I was talking with one of my, uh, well, you know, commenting with one of my uh, viewers today about a lot of stuff with the Todd Guy case, you know. Um, it's like I was telling that person that it's important to leave the logic within. The, the the research you know because you never know when something may turn out to be just a missing person's case just like with this it's a little bit of both it has that strangeness with the criteria that go along with the missing 411 cases but it's also a story about a woman who has memory loss and she has she you know she handicapped and she has a lot of illness now this is a real life situation right here. This is not something that is just that. You know, it's two different cases because I know a case like this personally. The one I just mentioned a few minutes ago, you know, I know that case personally. So, and it was, you know, it, it was in my area, you know, so I was like, wow. You know, so it's not like it's not a common situation. It happens in real life. Not saying this ain't real life, but I mean, just that one part of the scenario, you know, it does happen. So that's what, that is what would make it a logical story or a story with a logical background. But a lot of these other cases where they don't make any sense, those aren't logical. Because when I say don't make sense, I mean, which type of serial killer or what serial killer have you ever heard of that can literally make a person vanish without a trace without leaving no evidence whatsoever even the evidence about them even being there i'm just saying there are a lot of things that are happening with these cases that i know humans can't seem to do because if that was the case nobody would ever be found the people that hurt these people or kept these people they would never be found they would just be walking amongst us just committing crimes killing people and never never leaving any kind of evidence behind have you ever heard of them doing that before because i haven't never there's always been evidence that they find for you to know that there is a human element so like I said, it is very important to leave the logic within the research of you trying to find out what happened to these people. But at the same time, there's that other half where you can't help but talk about the weird stuff. Like a person just vanishing without a trace and never being found. There's a story I, I don't know if I did a video on it, but it was a story about an elderly woman who lived at her daughter's farm along with her husband not her daughter's husband but her husband was her basically the woman who owned the farm her parents were living with her you know you know how, you know how that happens you think they get too old to have to worry about all this all the strife of you know you know being in the, the world you know where you gotta work and pay your bills and all that stuff she just wanted her parents to live with her that way she could take care of them you know so the father obviously was still spry enough to go out there and till the land. You know, he had, he was on the tractor on a, you know on a regular basis, helping her, you know, do what she needed to do for a farm. 
and the mother would actually ride along with the husband every day when he's on. Well, not every day, but whenever he's on it, she'd be riding on it with him. So one day it was lunchtime. She said she's gonna go back to the house and you know and you know make some lunch, like a sandwich or something like that. So she gets off the tractor. And her husband is one of those kind of people that really loves his wife, so that means he's going to be making sure that she is safe, which is what every husband is supposed to do, right? Even, of course, with him being that age, you know, they're a golden couple. So she, he's watching her go back to the house, but she has to pass through a field of corn. Think about this. She goes into the cornfield. Think about this. Remember the movie Field of Dreams, Shoeless Joe Jackson, and all the rest of the baseball players that came through the field just to play on the baseball field that, um, what's his name, um, uh, his father's name, Kinsella, okay, Ray Kinsella, just so they could play on Ray Kinsella's baseball field, you saw how they left through the field. Through the uh, the cornfield, and you saw how they came through the cornfield to get to the baseball field. That is what she did, but she was the part which the part that she went through was when she goes into the field and vanishes without a trace. She's never been found, never. So she literally vanished within the cornfield. I mean, there's so many weird things about cornfields. Remember Children of the Corn? Uh huh. Uh, I do remember that. I do. So, we did this. It's the same thing. But you never thought in a million years that this case would be what reminds you of Field of Dreams. Maybe. A lot of cases happen like that, but nobody knows about it because it happens on a cornfield. They're going to be like, okay, well, so you mean to tell me that they put the strangeness of a story like that in the movie, but they turned the entire concept into a movie, you know, where you get these ghosts coming through the field, you know, through the cornfield. And you see how they, like, dematerialize as they walk in, into the open space and then when they're walking into the field they start to fade away the further they go into it it is so strange and crazy but it is cool i love it it's on cable right now ouch i watched it like twice at home and once while i was at work i always loved that movie and kevin costner is a very very good actor but it was the fact that that whole concept was a big movie yet you hear this story about a an elderly woman who walks into the same type of cornfield and vanishes without a trace before she can even get to the house. So between point A and point B, something happened. Maybe there was a wormhole somewhere deep within the cornfield. And she just walked right into it. And didn't even realize it was even there. I don't know, maybe she fell into it. It could have been a wormhole that was actually, you know, within the ground itself. Or... It could have been a portal where she walks into it and was instantly transported to another level of this earth that was similarly identical to this one, but still strange or different. Now that you see where I'm going with this, I'm just saying, the concept is in the movie, yet you hear the same thing that is a real life story. A case where a woman vanishes in a cornfield. Makes you wonder, did they get the idea from that? Depending on when it happened. Because I think this was probably back in the 1980s maybe? Or 70s? I'm not sure I have to look that up again. You know, an elderly woman disappears in cornfield. Okay, let's see. Maybe that might, that might do it. That might do it. Let me let me check real quick. You know, you know, like that. Sometimes make these uh, videos like at least a little hour long, give ourselves a little play time. You know, so it's only been twenty nine minutes, so I got plenty of time. So let me just look this up real quick. Let's see, Elder 
woman vanishes in corn field. Oh, this ought to be a good one. Let's see. Okay, lost woman with dementia found. Oh, found in cornfield, thanks to police drone. Okay, but they said, oh, here we go, wait a minute. Oh, she was found alive. In a corn? Let me see, let me see what year this was, though. They might be talking about the same woman. Cause all I all I heard of was the fact that she went in there and never came out. That's what I heard. Now they're saying this woman, she was found in the cornfield. So you mean to tell me after all these years that she was missing, they found her in the cornfield? But they said they found her alive. Maybe she went in and somehow came out the same way. But years later, I don't know. <laughs> That would be pretty strange. <laughs> you know, and she probably looked the same way she did when she left. So that means everybody got older, but she didn't. You know, she was stuck in some sort of time freeze. I don't know. <laughs> that would be crazy. Um, okay, that's way past. Cause I, I, it, this can't be the one. Because I can't even see. This was in 2017. Okay. Yeah, this happened in 2017. Lost woman. I think I did hear about that once. She got lost in a field, like in a cornfield. Couldn't find her way out. That's crazy. But uh, yeah, it says right here, eighty-year-old woman found alive in cornfield. So I know that can't be it. You know, because this, like I said, this happened like years ago. You know, it was like maybe eighty-five. Because they, they tried to say the woman had dementia too. The one disappeared. So. But I don't know. They might not even have that information in here. Because <laughs> if they keep saying found in Iowa cornfield. You know. They keep saying they found her. But she's been missing for years. And she's never been found. Unless that's what they wanted you to think. I don't know. <laughs> she, I, I keep looking it up, but that's all I find. Um, let me see. In the eighties, try that because that might bring up that information. Oh, see that when it happened. Well, it, no, it said two thousand seventeen. So. Cool. Yeah, it's not showing anything. But that's, that's a really old, old case. Very old case. So, they might not even have it up here. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Uh, story in Wisconsin. Oh, no, that's something else. That's something else. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to keep trying to look for it. Because David Politis was the one that talked about that case. On coast to coast AM, I remember it like it was yesterday. Cause I listen anytime I knew he was gonna be up there. When I was honing my um my 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 love for these cases, you know, just you know, just the fact that they're so strange and weird, it helps you learn more about the mysterious. It lets you learn more about the unknown and realize the unknown is just as much reality as anything else. We just don't think that. Or don't realize that because they don't want you to think that. They want you to keep thinking it's nothing but a mystery or like a story or whatever. They don't want you to believe that this stuff is reality because it is. You know the the, the strangeness of it, the unknown part, like the cryptic creepers and everything. Same difference. Now there's a video on YouTube now by Henry McCabe. Now that case really creeps me out. Cause think about it, you hear that darn that dog growl in the background. Now the person that says stop, you never hear it because the crazy uh, woman who was narrating the darn thing kept talk, talking over everything, you know. But they did that on purpose because for some reason they don't want you to hear the whole thing. They only want you to hear the growl. But that's the most important part of the video 
or I mean the recording anyway, that growl, because that's letting you know that there are creatures out there that think like humans enough to be like, okay, you may want to scare you, you know, and you hear him moaning. Maybe he has some sort of power where he was able to disrupt his, you know, eternal system, you know, to where he was in a lot of pain. And then he was in so much pain, it caused a trauma, and the trauma killed him. That might have been the reason why he was found dead, because that pain caused a lot of trauma to his system. And that creature probably had the ability to disrupt it from somehow. You know, like like I said, there's a lot of cryptic creatures out there that think and have the mind of a human. Well, not have to literally have the mind of a human, but they think like humans. So that's why they're always able to evade hunters and all that stuff. Think about all these, uh, like Bigfoot hunters. They always and never have been able to catch them or capture them or rip their fur off and sell it to the highest bidder. Or stuff it and sell it to the highest bidder. You don't see that. They want to do it, but you don't see it. Want to know why? Because they know how to stay away from us. They think just like we do. Think about it. They walking upright. Okay. They got the same type of, you know, body language that we have, except they're just more primitive. Yet they know to how to stay away from us. Weird, but very true. I'm just saying. So, um, but yeah, with that situation right there, that Henry McKay case is crazy. Because, I mean, listening to that uh, recording was just like, wow. And people can do a documentary about that all day long. They can talk about the, the path that he took for him to end up the way he was. But the only thing that matters out of all that to the ones that know is that growl. What the fuck was that? That's what I'm asking. What was that? Was it a werewolf? Was it a dog man? Anything that would look like a growl. Like it could growl. Like a, a dog or a wolf. Or maybe even a werewolf. Just saying. I know it wasn't a wolf wolf. Because a wolf wouldn't just stop. After a man says stop, unless you have it trained. The wolves are wild animals. That's that's like a man keeping a lion for a pet in the city. Walking down the street. While everybody's trying to get away from the lion because they see you walking like you walking a dog. <laughs> Thinking that sucker's going to turn into a battle cat or something. <laughs> oh, man. That would be something. You know, but... It is what it is. You know, there's weirdness in every case. So when you say stuff like, uh, convince, use something a little bit more convincing to convince me. So I said, okay. You know, basically saying, find another way for you, you know, for me to believe it. Yes. That's kind of like what I got from that. So I pushed forward. Added more stuff to the mix, you know, because that's what was supposed to be done, you know. Um, it's like very, very, very much more than people may think it is. There's a little logic in it, and there's a little um, mystery in it, just like the um, Tide Guide case. Cause that's where most of this came from. The Tire Guy case. I, I think that's which one it is. Um, yeah. The Tire Guy case. Um, the person wanted me to, you know, find another way for me to, um, I guess, convince him. Hold on, let me see. Uh, let me just make sure this is the one off. Let me see. Oh, wait, 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 no, it wasn't this one, it wasn't this one, yeah, it wasn't this one, I'll tell you which one it was, it wasn't that one, but I know which one it was, it was the one about uh, the guy who was at the very edge of that darn bowl, I think, 
I think this is the one. Yeah. What's going on, on YouTube family? This I might be the one, I think. I think it's this. It might be, it might be, it might be. I have to see. I haven't looked at it in a while, so I kind of lost my place. I think this might be it. I'm not sure. I mean, I thought it was. Um, okay, now if it's not this one, it it it, it, it was the top guy case. Yeah, it had to been the Todd guy case. It had to been. <laughs> Cause I think somebody else had responded. You know, it was it was some early in, early information. That's what it was. Okay, it's a lot of stuff to go through. A lot of stuff. And I, think, yep, here it is. This is the one. Yep, I got it. All right. Uh, yeah. What they wanted was a better explanation, so I gave them one, you know, and I was happy to do it because, you know, when you kind of just jump right into the weird stuff, it's because if it sounds like it may have some weird stuff like that in it, you can't help but bring it out. See, it's just like all these other cases where somebody sees some weird shit within the evidence and it gets so weird they don't even want to touch it so they get somebody like David Polite to, to deal with it because he's that kind of guy you know he likes to dig deep and find research with more research on top of more research on top of more research that keeps him busy but he knows that there's got to be something there so he just keeps digging and digging and digging and digging he's like a, like a ever ready battery I'm like good grief man you ever go to sleep jeez <laughs> you know so um that's kind of like with all these other cases. And that's the thing. That is the thing. That's where the better explanation comes from. You know? That is how weird it is. So when you see that if a person just vanishes without a trace and you've never been found, what other way could you explain it? Because you never found a body. Now, I'm not going to say that bodies have never, have, have never been recovered. You know, quickly. I'm not gonna say that they that they've never. They, I'm not gonna say that. Well, I just know that they either recovered or they're not. That's the main point. Okay, some are recovered very quickly. Some are recovered are recovered within a couple of weeks or maybe even a month, maybe a couple of years. But they recovered. They recovered, and by that time, of course, they're bon they're all bone. But if their body is recovered, like say in a body of water, or in a grassy area, or in a muddy area, but your body is bone dry. Better explanation, my friend. I figure I'd do that right here on my channel, instead of just sending a comment. So, if you're watching this, you know what I'm talking about. But I'm just saying, a better explanation for all of this. And excuse the... I, I realize that I'm getting very thin because I've been on a certain diet for like 10 years and I'm just not really starting to see how I'm losing the weight because I'm down to like 172 pounds. Maybe good for some people, but I've always been like 180. So I got to just kind of bulk it up just a little bit. I don't want to lose too much because I don't want to start looking sick in the face because I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I had cold, but I wasn't like sick sick. So, but anyway, excuse the face looks if it looks too thin you know versus how it, my face looked before if you noticed that but if you did you know I'm, I'm on it I'm on it but anyway but yeah that the, the, these cases are weird and you can't help but think about that if you know about these things you're not gonna say anything about it if you don't know anything about it not everybody just knows about wormholes or what they do 
Okay, wormholes are these very long tubular like tunnels that lead from one existence to another. Okay, and when I say existence, I mean aka um, parallel Earth or another level of the planet. Okay, there's so many different variables or so many different ways to describe it, or there's so many different names. Now, you got portals, which are a little bit shorter. That's like that's 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 kind of like um, when you like say you you're in like in a ship, like one of those navy ships, because I've been in one. You open up the door, and then there's like a little space from the um, I guess you could call it the, the threshold to the other side of the threshold. But it's instead of it just being that one little bar, it's like a space. So you, it's like they open it up. You know, so you got to step over that space just to get to the other side. And that's kind of like what a portal, a portal is. It's a very short tunnel. And you literally can take your leg, step through it, and bam, you're on another level. You know, it's, it's basically like opening up a window. That, you know, where you can see outside. And you, you know, so, you know, there's a lot of different, you know, um, what you call them, um, uh, analogies <laughs> yeah, that, that describe this whole thing. But that's basically what a portal is. A portal is a very short one that go that way. It's just a door that opens up to another level. Wormhole goes from this planet to another planet, but it has to pass between two different levels. Okay, so let's just say you look up in the sky. And you all of a sudden start seeing these little grid lines that are crisscrossing each other. There is a gate that actually blocks us from that other level. But the only way that can happen, it would have to be up there. Because that's where the wormholes are. The wormholes are in the sky or like within the atmosphere. Okay. And there is, because like I said, there is a gate that blocks us from this other level. Or parallel earth and the wormhole helps you get through that gate that's how you're able to get past you know this level to get to another the wormhole can actually peer through that gate and you can get to the other side okay that's the only way that works the gate blocks us from it so we can't just walk through it or we can't take a shuttle and fly through it because it, you, we just won't be able to do it we won't be able to get to it because it's intangible for one. And it's it's actually in between the different levels, so we can't see it. It's actually invisible to us. Because our eyes are not set to that frequency to see the other side. That's why it is being blocked so that we can't. That that's the um that's the frequency basically, you know, that, that keeps us from being able to see past it. You know, so very informative stuff, but that's how it all works. Just so you understand why these people disappear the way they do, you know, and how is mostly because that's how they disappear, you know, if they vanish without a trace. The wormhole sucks them in, and then boom, you yeah. thrust through time. Not only, I don't want to say time and space, but you thrust through a tunnel. And next thing you know, you land, boom, you're on another planet. And I literally mean another actual, not planet, but another Earth. Okay. Now I would imagine there will be some people there waiting for you to, act, you know, to help you because they know they probably get people like that all the time. They somehow get sucked into a wormhole and they end up on that world, you know, or on that on that earth. And so they ain't got no choice but to help them because they got to cope with the fact that they'll never be able to make it home. Humans don't have the technology to do that. They, these things happen randomly. And that's why they, they they disappear the way they do. That's why it's always so sudden. Nobody would think that would ever happen. That's why. Because even if it did, it wouldn't believe it. You know? But anyway, guys, just thought I'd throw some very creepy stuff your way. You know, three something in the morning. I got to get in the bed. I got to go to work today. You know, so um, I will see you later. All right, guys. Have a good one. I will be back with another one as soon as I find a case to talk about. All right? But for now, I will leave you with what I always do at the very end of every video. 
Aloha, mahalo, and ahuiho. Peace out, brother, and peace out, why you there? Ooh, all right, shoots. <laughs>